Hi everybody, welcome back. My name's Claire. I've got a new favourite colour scheme, which is purple, green, copper and white. I'm going to do a pour with those four colours. I always do so many colours. I'm going to really, really rein it in. Just the four colours, nothing extra. Just those four colours tonight. Um, I'm going to do, oh, what am I doing? What I'd like to do tonight is a swipe. So I'm going to lay the colours down in ribbons, in bands, and then I'm going to do probably a double swipe. So swipe all the colours one way, swipe all the colours back the other way. Um, I'm going to be putting silicon in each colour. Um, so let me show you the colours. So this is it. Very simple, very, very minimal. Four colours. So two Pebio Studio Acrylics colours, iridescent copper, iridescent green yellow, and then Amsterdam blue violet, uh, which is up here. I've added just a little bit of white to it. That will help with the um, transparency. It will make it slightly opaque. Also just makes it lighter so that when it dries, it doesn't dry so dark that it looks black. You can still see the purple. And then Dale Rowney pearl white. They're all mixed with PVA glue and water. I'll put the recipe in the description of the video. And then I've added three drops of this, which is spot on treadmill silicon and given them all a good mix. So I'm all ready to start. This canvas is a 29 by 42 centimeter. Um, I've got my colors here. I am so excited about this color scheme. There is just something just so bright and vivid and exciting about these three colours, the copper, um, iridescent green, yellow and purple. They're just fab, very, very bright. It's not going to be a subtle painting, <clears throat> um, but just really, really love them. So my plan is to do bands of colour. I think I probably will do a band maybe about an inch wide, I think. Right, I've got a ruler just to keep it simple. I'm just going to do... Um, bands which are a ruler width I think so I'm just going to use this as a rough guide so I know where to put the paint just to try and keep the lines as straight as possible more or less works out. I was just thinking as I was doing that, I should have measured it because I could have ended up with a really small line there. Um, right, I think what I will do is aim for just slightly this side of each line so that, in, so that that one will be slightly larger. So I'm just going to pour the paint on. Oh, let me show you the consistency. It's quite thick, leaves a lovely trail on the surface, leaves a lovely mound on a mound. So I'll pour some on initially and then I will probably spread it out a bit with my finger but I'm just going to do a small line to start with so I make sure I've got enough paint. So purple, copper, white. So this will be green again. And then purple, copper, white and green. Yeah, I've got lots of green. I've got lots of paint here, so I think it'll be fine. But I think I'll just, I don't want too much. So if I do it, if I do it like this, I'll um, do a small band to start with and I'll come back and add more in a minute. Right, that's most of it covered. So I'm now just going to just tip a little bit off to get the edges covered. And that just also, it just really smooths out the paint. Right, here is the scary bit, the exciting bit. 
So I'm going to, I think I'm going to start from this end. I'm going to swipe in one direction. I've got a piece of laminated paper here. I'm going to sweep, sweep in one direction. Um, then I'm going to, I think I'm going to swipe back in the other direction. So let's just have a think. I've just had an idea. When I've done this in the past, I've ended up with a massive section at this end of that of the first colour and a massive section of this colour and only been happy with what's in the centre. I've just got an idea. I've got extra white and white is the colour that would go on either end. I'm actually just going to swipe more with the white, I think. I'm just going to put a line of the white down here in the hope that actually it breaks up the brown at that end and then the green at this end. So that it's not all taken with it. Right, let's try. So, um, so I'm just going to touch this edge of this plastic into the white. And then just drag it across. Right, I made it. <laughs> so now, let's just give that a wipe. I'm going to use the other edge and swipe back. So I'm going to use the clean edge. go back the other way right so green here nowhere else apart from there slightly so let's torch I've just refilled the gas in my torch, so I'm going to try and be careful, not get too close too quickly, because if you once when you refill it, it's really powerful. So I've been used to holding the torch quite close to bur burst air bubbles, but because it, there's lots of gas in this now, I know I can hold this up quite high. When I'm torching, I'm constantly moving. I'll turn it off. I'm constantly moving it in circles. If you keep it still, it will burn the paint. If you just do it in lines, you'll get um, long lines of cells. So I'm constantly moving it to try and avoid both of those. Where is the green? I'm not going to torch anymore now. I'm just going to let that develop for a few minutes. And then I'm going to do some tilting. So I'm just going to tilt towards this end. See what happens and see if it moves. I'm going to do it quite slowly. there is a reasonable amount of paint on here so I'm hoping I can get to that edge without distorting everything too much
Right. Bits I love, bits I don't like. I don't like these two corners at all. I think what I might do is get a balloon out and do some balloon kisses because I think that might work. I've done this before. I've done balloon kisses before on a swipe like this and it worked really well. So I've got a tiny balloon here, filled it with a little bit of water. I only want very small kisses because this is not a big canvas. So let's try it. Pretty, that's really pretty. I'm gonna get another canvas to the side here just to um, put the kisses onto. So here it is finished. Um, it's been a, it's a little while later because I wanted the paint to thicken slightly so that the balloon kisses stayed. I've just gone over and repeated all the balloon kisses, and I just did something really cool. I um did the balloon kiss and then I just excuse me, hold my hands, look at them. I just dipped my finger in and then just swirled it round slightly as I pulled my finger out, and look what's happened. I've created these little tiny swirls in the center of the flowers which i just think is so pretty um just look at these cells they're so pretty um what i'm loving is the cells and then the balloon kisses the little flowers in between um the balloon kisses i think are great if you if something goes wrong or you want to hide something so if you look if i'd stand back and you have a look at this um, you can see, you can see lots of beautiful white cells here, but can you see this section of white cells? All the cells became quite distorted. Um, but if you do the little kisses between, along those rows to hide them, I think it just makes a feature of it. So it, I, to me now, it doesn't look like a lot of distorted cells. It just looks like some beautiful flowers. Also, that kiss there, it pulled the green out. Um, that kiss there pulled the green out. So the green is definitely underneath here but it just hasn't all come to the surface so by doing the balloon kisses it's pulling more to the surface um so i really really happy with this it's taken a while um, and it didn't go as well as i wanted it to but i'm actually really happy so it will be interesting to see how this dries it's now dry i've got really mixed feelings about it in principle, I really love it. Um, the colours I really like, the design, the composition, but I'm, they're just there's things I do differently. There's things that went wrong and I can't stop noticing those things. Um, so I think in theory, I'm happy with the result, but the, the, there's a but. Um, so let, let me show you close up. Um, so the some of these balloon kisses are just gorgeous. That one there, absolutely spot on. I love that. I love all of these ones here. I love the balloon kisses next to the cells and the different size cells, I think just works really well. I love the little twirly bits in the middle of the balloon kisses. I love the colours. Um, so I think basically this two thirds, I love. Then when I get to this part, I can't unsee those distorted cells, those white cells. 
um, and the fact that it didn't flow over the edge quite right. Um, every painting is a learning curve. So although I might not be over the moon with the result of this, it really doesn't matter because I've learned a lot from it. Um, I've learned what I would do differently next time. And I think that that's, that's the only way you can try and improve and try and better what you've done in the past by learning. Um, so although I guess it's disappointing because you'd hope that every time you could create some sort of masterpiece that's, you know, you, that you just love. But in reality, that's not true at all. That's just not the case. Um, so I will always just try and take the positive from um, a painting or a pour that I'm just not completely happy with. Um, and I know what I would do differently next time. Um, so there you are. Please let me know your thoughts on that. Um, do you agree with that? Do you find that you learn from paintings? Um, let me know what you think. Great, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Um, please do subscribe to my channel. Great, thanks so much everyone. Bye.